Hi guys, as promised, here's the Paddington Bear face cake tutorial. So this one matches some cookies that I made the other week. I'll put a link in for the cookies that match this one for you guys to find. So I'm starting with a large board. I think this cake drum that I've got is actually about 14 inches. I do like my new apron as well, guys. It matches my pins that I have. I'm just going to cover it in blue fondant. Okay, so just cover it all over in blue fondant. It doesn't need to be rolled out very thick at all to cover the board. Sorry guys, losing my voice today. And I've printed off a picture of Paddington's face. I think, is this one Paddington? The New Adventures of Paddington? Requested by my niece, Ella. So my template, I printed it to try and roughly match the size of the cake I'm doing. So I've got a 10 inch sponge cake for this one. I've done a chocolate sponge and I've also got a 10 inch thin cake card as well. So go as thin as possible as you can with your round cake card. And I'm going to cut around the shape of Paddington's head. I've cut the brim off his hat. I don't need that bit. We're going to add that in icing later. And then on the back of the cake board, I'm just drawing around the template. So around that calf. And you can cut that out. Now, I'm just going to put some simple syrup on my chocolate cake. And guys, I've actually completely cheated on this one and used a packet mix cake. We've just bought some for our shop, so I wanted to have a little bit of a go with it to see what it's like. It actually was really nice. All you had to do was add water, so I was a little bit dubious about what it might be like. But actually, it was a really nice cake and really easy to make. Um, I'll put links to it below so you guys can see which one it is that, that I used. And instead of buttercream on this one, I used a chocolate ganache filling. Again, we're going all out cheating today and I'm just using the Renshaw's ready-made one. So just sandwich that in the middle. Again, just some simple sugar syrup. Now I did completely break my cake, but it's fine. Now you don't have to add sugar syrup. It's just if you think that your cake might dry out or if you're keeping it a few days before it's gonna be eaten, you don't want it to go dry. It was actually quite moist, this uh, cake, so I maybe didn't need to add it. So I've cut around the cake board as a template. If it doesn't quite meet up to the edge of the template and just use your cake off cuts to sort of fill out any bits that need filling out say for example the edge of the cheeks and now what i'm going to do is look at where his face dips in so kind of around the uh, uh, around the eye area is in deeper than sort of the cheek and muzzle area so we're cutting out a little bit in our cake and then i'm going to cut my template down just to help me a little bit with whereabouts those eyes are going to go now you can freehand it you don't have to use a template if you want i'm not good enough to do it without a template it just means I get the size in, um, I get it, well, I get it a little bit closer to what it should be and the proportions and things. So I'll use the offcuts there to fill in where the nose is going to be. Don't put a lot on the nose. I don't want his nose to stick out too much. And I'm going to cover it all in this ganache. So my leftover ganache that I've got in the pot. If you find the ganache is a little bit thick, just microwave it just for a few seconds. Now this ganache doesn't set hard, guys. So if I make my own ganache, it usually sets pretty firm. This one doesn't. So it's going to stay quite soft on there. But you can use buttercream if you prefer. And then I'm going for like a pale teddy bear brown colour in my fondant. Now, if it doesn't quite reach the very top of the head, that's fine because the hat's going to go on there. But try not to go too thick with your fondant. And then I'm really going to push it in to the shape of the cake that I've cut underneath. And the cake's quite soft, so you'll find that you can manipulate it a little bit even under the fondant or through the fondant, I should say. So have a look at your little template and I can just see that like the hairs on his cheeks kind of are a little bit pointier. So I'm really concentrating on getting a bit of shape around those cheeks or the edge of his face. Just make sure you smooth in the eye area and then you can cut off any extra from around the bottom edge of the cake. I'm just going to use a large balling tool to mark in where his eyes are going to go. Again, have a look at your template so you know roughly where they're going to go. And I've got a piece of brown fondant for the nose. I've got a fairly large nose, but I'm holding it against the template again so I can compare for the size. The mouth, nice and simple, just a little line, kind of smiling up to the side. And now let's add a bit of colour. Now you can use an airbrush with food colour if you prefer. I um, make such a mess with airbrushes. So one day I'm going to get the airbrush out and show you guys how I use it. Um, but for the time being, I find the, the dry powder dust a little bit easier to use. So we're going on with that. Again, have a look at an image so you can see where Paddington's face is a little bit darker. So just kind of under the arches of the eyebrows, he was looking a little bit darker and around the edges of the cheeks. And they are edible food colours. I think this one's squirrel brown that I used. I'm going to put links below as well. And I'm lightening kind of his muzzle or nose area just with some white powder. Just be careful that, you know, if you do add too much, it kind of drops on everything. So use a big, soft, fluffy brush to dust any extra any excess away. You can go in the mouth with a tiny bit of black 
and I'm going to use some dipping solution, just a tiny bit to mix my black into a paint. So I'm going to try slightly translucent with it. So quite watered down just to darken the bottom area of the nose. And I'm lightening the top bit with a bit of white. Okay, so for the eyes, they're going to look a bit creepy at first. So I just put an oval of fondant in there in like a brown. It's pretty much the same colour as his, um, as the rest of his face. But we're going to add to that. So we're just using some food colour. The powdered ones I've just used diluted down again. So I want to darken them quite a bit. So in the pictures, he does have like a little pupil and brown iris. But they're actually, they are very dark. So it's difficult to see the difference between the two. So I'm trying to have them so that you can see it a little bit, but not too much. And then you want a white dot of fondant in each one. So it looks like he's got a bit of a sparkle in his eye which is the light reflecting in there. Just darken up any bits that you need to darken, like the top of the head before you put the hat on, because when the hat's on, it's going to be a little bit trickier. So I've got, I think I've got 250 gram pack of red fondant that I've used. I've just rolled it into a long strip. Now my plan was to put the edge of the hat on in a separate piece, but I think that I could just do it in this one piece. I wish I'd rolled it a little bit wider if I'd have realized I was going to just do it in one piece. But I'm just trying to turn the edge over. It just saves me adding an additional piece, guys. You might need to put a little bit of water on the edge to stick it in place. You can use edible glue if you want. Now, the edge of the hat, the brim of the hat, is going to flop a little bit with it being fondant. So I'm going to just put some kitchen roll underneath just to kind of hold it in place until it starts to firm up. So in about half an hour, an hour, it will start to firm a little bit. It won't be set, but it, it will be firm enough that I can move away these bottles and things that are just holding it up at the moment. You can add a bit of shading to under the hat if you want. And then I'm going to add some little stitches. Now, it probably would have been easier if I'd have piped them on in royal icing. Um, but I didn't want to go make any royal icing. So I'm going to stick them on in fondant. Also, you could paint or draw them on. This is probably the most time consuming bit of the whole cake. So I put like little indentations in where I wanted the stitches to look like they were going in and out of. I very quickly got bored of that <laughs> because I'm quite impatient. And I just decided it was just going to stick them along the edge like that instead. And then I wanted to shade around the edges of them. So I've got the black powder, so the edible powder, diluted quite a bit with dipping solution. And then just kind of painted around those stitching lines. Next, we're going to use some blue fondant to create a bit of a collar. Or the edge of his... Actually, is it his hood? It might be the edge of his hood that goes on the top of his duffel coat. So I'm going to stick that there. And the little gap in between, he just wants a bit of his fur coloured fondant. So it looks like his neck is just on show a little bit. Also some stitching. So just repeating the exact same thing we did on the hat, but this time in blue. I don't need quite as many stitches on this one. You can see my stitches are quite large. I think when I looked at the picture of Paddington, they were nowhere near as big as this. But the larger they were, the fewer of them I had to do. So I'm now going to add him to my iced board that I did earlier. I've just put some water on there, which will make the fondant on the board go sticky and then he'll stick to it. I've got a bit more blue fondant down here. Now, there is quite a lot of fondant on the bottom of this cake, guys. I probably wouldn't eat all this fondant. I know some kids like to eat fondant. I wouldn't. It is more just for decoration at the bottom. So this is the top of his duffel coat, so kind of his shoulder and chest area. Put a line down for the seam. And if you want to texture it, you can. I don't think it shows very well on this video, but the little brush thing that I'm using is like a rubber-ended brush. And it's like a little texturizing tool. It shows better in person than I think it does on the video, this guys. And then two patches just under sort of the collar at each side. And then we'll put some more stitching on there. And I apologize, guys. I'm suffering quite badly today with my hay fever. That might be why I sound a little bit different to usual. Okay, so you can darken now along the edges of any seams on the coat. So remember, the more diluted you have your powders, the more transparent they're going to be. I maybe went a little bit too heavy-handed with them. And then let's add the bits that the toggles are going to go on. Is that what you call them? Toggles? Those little wooden buttons that sit on a duffel coat. So the first patches kind of are the bit that go under the toggle or button. Again, I don't really know what they're called. Um, I'm rolling a thin bit and we're going to twist it and then fold it in half. And we're just going to place this here between those two kind of triangle-ish shaped pieces. And then we're going to roll some toggles or buttons. It's kind of like a thin oval. Try and flatten each end a little bit if you can. And then we're going to put a line through the middle. Now these are going to just come over the edge of my board. 
if you're going to be transporting yours in a box anywhere, you know, you might want to not have them quite as low down as what I've put them. But they're not really travelling anywhere on mine, so I'm okay doing this. So I've just used my edible paint pots. Well, the paint pots themselves aren't edible. But the pots that contain my edible paint colours um, are just resting the toggles on there until they dry. And then once they've firmed up, so like I say, in a couple of hours maybe for this, I can just remove them and they'll stick in place fine. And then you can add any shading again that you want to that. Or any highlights as well with the lighter colours. And it's not the most complicated of cakes, this guys, but I had fun making this one. And it was requested by my niece. Also matches the cookies. So you can see some of the cookies here. And I'll put the link up again to that video where we did the cookies. The paw print ones were probably the most popular with the children um, at my niece's party, definitely. But I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see new videos weekly. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.